Hi, my name is Idalise Baez and I'm a sales engineer at Progress Software. And today I'm going to be talking to you about data integration for your Spark environment. I have three demos to show you. The first one is a JDBC Apache Scoop demo, where I'm going to show you how to import external data into your Hadoop environment. In the second demo, I'm going to show you how to use your favorite BI or reporting tool to access Spark data with the DataDirect ODBC Spark SQL driver. In the third demo, I'm going to show you how to access external Salesforce data using Spark's data frames. Here is your Hadoop ecosystem. This can be Hortonworks, Pivotal, Cloudera, MapR, and regardless of what your Hadoop e ecosystem looks like, you can have Scoop sitting on your Hadoop ecosystem. Scoop is a tool that allows you to utilize bulk data ingestion to either import or export relational and cloud data sources into your Hadoop environment. You can do this utilizing JDBC connectivity solutions. Let's take a look at how easy it is to access this external data using a DataDirect JDBC driver. To start, I am logged into my Hadoop sandbox environment. The first command I inputted was an ls command to show you that I've installed the DataDirect drivers, and they're all listed here. This next command that I'm typing out is a copy command. I am copying one of the DataDirect JDBC drivers to the scoop lib folder. Now I'm changing into this scoop lib folder, and I'm doing an ls to show you that DataDirect SQL Server driver, which is shown as sqlserver.jar, has been successfully copied to the scooplib folder. And that is as simple as it is to set up this scoop environment to access external data using DataDirect's JDBC driver. You can now see me executing a scoop command. I'm doing a scoop import command. And my connection string uses the JDBC DataDirect SQL Server driver. We have just successfully imported external data using a DataDirect JDBC driver through Scoop into Hadoop. We're going to take a look at unlocking that data through Spark SQL to any BI or reporting application. In the second demo, we are going to utilize the DataDirect ODBC Spark SQL driver, and we're going to be using a BI tool called ClickView. I am starting off in my Hadoop sandbox. And from here, uh, I've exported a spark underscore home environment variable. And I'm changing into that spark home, and I am starting the Hive Thrift server. It's really important to note what port you start your Hive Thrift server on, because later when we use the DataDirect ODBC Spark SQL driver to connect to Spark SQL, we are going to utilize this same port. So I execute that command, and I'm going to just make sure that that Spark SQL has started. And to do that, I'm going to execute beeline, and I'm going to execute this connect statement so that I can connect to Spark SQL. You can see that I'm using localhost and that same port that the thrift server is on, 10001. This is important for later when you create that ODBC data source with the DataDirect driver. You'll use the host or IP of your Hadoop environment and 10001 or whatever port you choose to start your thrift server on. I'm now logging in, and you can see I've successfully connected to Spark SQL. Now I'm going to show my tables so that we can see the Hive tables we have. And I'm going to even execute a SQL statement. I'm executing this SQL statement so you can take a look at how this data looks in the Beeline tool versus using our favorite BI or reporting tool. Now I'm opening up that BI tool. I'm using ClickView, but this can work with other tools such as Tableau, MicroStrategy, or any other ODBC compliant uh, BI or reporting tool. I started by creating an ODBC DSN 
for the DataDirect 8.0 Apache Spark SQL driver. I then entered the IP address of my Hadoop environment and I set the port to that same port that we started the thrift server on. Now within my BI tool, I can find that ODB, ODBC DSN and I can test that connection. Connection succeeded. So now we can see those exact same hive tables we saw earlier. And I'm going to pull one of those tables into my click view document. I now get to choose which fields are important to me or if I want all of them. And there you have it. I have accessed all of my Hive data using DataDirect's ODBC Spark SQL driver and I get to create the visualization that I desire. We are on to our last demo. So how can Progress Data Direct help you with big data frameworks? Spark's Data Frames API sits on top of Spark's core and it allows you to program in Scala, Java, or Python to access your Hive data. But you can also access data for Spark across relational, cloud, SaaS, and NoSQL sources utilizing JDBC connectivity. I'm going to show you how. In this demo, we are going to create a Salesforce Spark data frame. I need to first start the Spark shell with the DataDirect JDBC driver. This command is spark shell dash dash jars. Then I'm entering the path to the DataDirect Salesforce jar. You can see that Spark is starting up. We can now establish a connection to Salesforce and read a Salesforce table within Spark. The command I'm using is val data frame underscore Salesforce SQL context dot read dot format we're going to use JDBC and then we're going to have the JDBC connection URL to Salesforce. We need to point the option to the data direct driver which has a driver class of com.ddtech.jdbc.sforce.sforce driver. And then we're going to list which table we are going to read. This one is pointing to Salesforce campaign table. And then it has the login credentials. Once that data frame is created, you can see all of the metadata that is associated with that data frame. Now we're going to register that Salesforce data as a temp table. And then we're going to use the data frame to execute a SQL query and access that Salesforce data. So you can see the SQL query I've decided is a select star from campaign. And this is a lot of data coming back really quickly within my Spark environment. And that's all there is to it. This exact demo can be replicated with any of our other JDBC connectivity solutions. Thank you for watching. And for more information, please visit progress.com slash data direct.